big in ABV. It's bold, but is it beautiful? Hang around for Nika Whiskey from the Barrel. Greetings whiskey lovers, I'm Big Al and welcome to Whiskey Straight, the place where you can join me and my spiritual odyssey through the wonderful world of whiskey. So if whiskey's your thing, go on ahead, hit that subscribe button and click on that bell notification so you can stay up to date with all future content. So that's not hang about, let's talk whiskey. Today folks, I'm in the land of the rising sun for review number 56 and it's this little cracker here the Nika whiskey from the barrel which is bottled at a nice healthy and hefty 51.4% ABV and I say little cracker because it is a little bottle over here we just get the 50cl version while in the states yes you've guessed it because everyone's a bit bigger over there even their whiskey bottles they get the 75cl but more power to them as we would say here but that said, unlike many Japanese whiskies you get this, these days, this is actually affordable. And you probably know that in recent years that the rise in the popularity of Japanese whisky, uh, coupled with a lack of stock, saw the availability uh, of the liquid actually tumble and the prices go the other way and actually skyrocket, making it very difficult to source and well, if you did, you're going to have to pray a pretty penny. But this, I say, is affordable and it is a relative steal in the mid 30 quid range. And long may that continue. Now, what we actually have here is a double matured blended whiskey. But it's a blended whiskey with a difference because although it says from the barrel here, it's not actually just from one barrel, it's from multiple barrels. Now the actual whiskey is a mix of single malt and grain from the Miyagioko and Yuichi distilleries. And what they say is it's then married together in a huge variety of barrels. Don't know the exact number, what they all are, but we do know that it includes bourbon barrels, sherry butts and refill hogsheads. So, what we should be getting here should be a characterful whiskey. There should be a lot of complexity, lots of different flavours and probably to a little of a spicy kick, particularly when you take into consideration that nice uh, proof point. So it's time for a taste then folks. Yep. So if you've got a bottle of this, pour yourself a wee dram or any other dram for that matter. Drink along with me and we'll share the experience together. Sluncher. So let's take a wee look at the colour first and you can see there that it's like nice, it's rich and probably like a bit of a polished mahogany sort of thing going on there. But it looks good. Well, all whiskey looks good to me. So let's see what the legs are like. And thick. Obviously showing there's a nice high alcohol content in there. So all looks good. So let's get right on and have a wee uh, nose and see what we get. Slauncher. Very warming on the arrival with notes of toasted oak, caramel, touch of fudge and then there's a nice wee hint of orange coming in on the back of those flavours. But it's interesting in a way because it's not zesty or orange peel or anything like that. It's more like unpeeled dried orange and it's a much more dumbed down sort of aroma. Now there's a spicy element coming into play. But it is very understated. It's there. It's like a gentle white pepper which becomes cinnamon, adding a wee bit more spiciness with the cinnamon. But again, it's subtle in nature, slightly understated, and it's like it's a mellow type of heat. It's very interesting because you would be expecting a wee bit more of a kick in the nose, but maybe it's that sort of massive variety of combination that's maybe just keeping a wee lid on it, so to speak. So let's go on again. 
And once you get right in there, a wee bit deeper into the Glen Cairn, that cinnamon note, it's a wee bit more striking now. There's a bit more to it, but it's not to the extent of fieriness in any way. Getting a bit of earthiness in there as well. And funny, a bit of damp wood, which is kind of contrasty compared to that warming cinnamon. But there's also some vanilla in there. Orange again, but more of a juicy orange this time. And a nice wee fruity burst of raspberry as well. And then right in the end, a wee zing of cinnamon. So really, really nice experience on the nose. Very subtle, gently rises to give out a wee bit more, but still at the same time, very understated indeed. I reckon it's just about time for a taste test. Cheers. Very orange up front. Both juicy and zesty. And there's a right punch of cinnamon there as well. Immediately, very different on the palate than it was on its nose. All that subtlety, that understated heat and spiciness is gone straight off. It does pack quite a punch there of cinnamon, of spiciness, and it's a hell of a lot more striking. But at the same time, not overpowering. And it's full of flavour, bringing in it a bit of vogue as well. And as it crosses the palate, as it develops, it comes a wee bit drying. There's a bit of nuttiness there. Even a wee bit of toasted, oaky, woody nature before. Then it becomes a wee bit more barrel char-like towards the back of the palate. So even on the first sip there, there's quite a lot going on. So we'll get it again and see how it develops. Really is a tongue tingler. That cinnamon spiciness is still there, but joining it now is some clove and that ups the heat a wee bit. And the orange is still there. And then here comes a nice dash of black pepper to add a wee bit of contrast to that spicy element. It sort of mutes the fieriness slightly and makes it a lot more balanced with that orange flavour and again with the oak and the woody notes it really is balanced and very nicely done indeed we'll go again and see what we get Christmas spices all those like spicy elements, bit of Christmas cake Potpourri, those things that remind you of the festive season. Mind you, we don't have too much to be festive about at the moment, but that's a whole other story. But at least we can still enjoy our whiskey. And by God, I'm enjoying this, I can tell you. Some vanilla essence is coming into play now as well. And, you know, it's like it's always been there, right or and about, but now it pops in and makes itself a wee bit more prevalent. And along with it, there's some caramel toffee and even a, a hint of fudge is also a part there as well. So it's actually a, quite a lot going on there and it is pretty impressive stuff, let me tell you. Now the mouthfeel here, it's rich, it's full bodied, coats the palate. It's like there's a layered texture. There's an underlying creaminess and then that tongue tingling nature of the spiciness gives it a, like a spongy sort of texture on top of that and it's really really nice and what really helps it as well is a long long lingering finish and that is bringing out again warming spice nice oak bit of orange 
and it just keeps on giving. And unlike what you can get in some higher proof whiskies, as it lingers, it doesn't become overly tannic. Those flavours still remain. They're still robust and it just keeps on giving. And to answer the question I posed at the start, this really is a beautiful whiskey. Delightfully beautiful whiskey. And I can't recommend it highly enough. I really have enjoyed this experience. And you know what? It just goes to prove that good whiskey is not all about single malt. It's not all about age statements. It's not all about big bucks. It's basically about good whiskey. Period. That's it. Good whiskey, irrespective, age statement, blend, whatever. And I tell you what, this is damn good whiskey in my book. So that all adds up. Well, for me, to a whiskey straight score of 90. A nice big rounded score for a beautifully rounded whiskey. So thanks for watching, folks. I really do appreciate your ongoing support. It means a lot to me. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. So until the next time, make sure you stay safe. Look after yourselves, look after each other and continue to drink your whiskey the way you like it. Slauncha. If you've watched right to the end, you're an absolute star and I really do appreciate it. So click on these other videos, take a look at them, let me know what you think. And while you're at it, if you fancy helping the channel out, have a look at my Patreon and don't forget to follow me on my other social media platforms.